ओम जननी शारदा देवी राम कृष्ण जगद्गु पाद पद्मे तयो श्रुवा प्रणमा मुहूर्म so when we uh, do shakti puja we have various methods hmm, which we have been discussing one is of course the external puja second is worshiping her in all beings third is regulating your own the vital energy within your own system you know in the puja padhati also this is there this portion is there and uh, if we cannot do any of this <laughs> then of course you of course even if you can do any of this uh, devotion to this form because you know mother uh, embodies the most sattvic aspect of the divine mother have you seen this hmm? there is no goddess who was so motherly and no mother who was so godly <laughs> that is our holy mother because think and see who has ever said ami satero ma ami asatero ma it's a tremendous thing to say and to behave towards everyone in in that wise throughout life anybody who came to mother felt they were coming to their own mother she treated everyone from such a young age oh, that was her bhav and you will see in the modern world even uh Uh, a son who's completely disobedient his own biological mother can disown him but look at mother's bhav huh? to everyone how however he is she is accepting without judging huh? without considering anything and treating both sharat maharaj and amjad as the same this is so remarkable isn't it she doesn't make any difference it's my own son she will say uh, i always think of one thing you know when i uh, meditate on mother see once uh, somebody said that uh, the future generations will refuse to believe a man called gandhi existed <laughs> i think it's albert einstein who yes. said this yes uh, such a non violent philosophy of life the future generations will refuse to believe that through satyagraha you can do something so big like getting independence for a, a politically subjugated country what to speak of holy mother the future generations may not believe such a being existed on this earth because if you penetrate into a, some of the incidents of her life really it becomes very clear that devi bhav na how it comes out and it this very charming combination of divinity and motherliness so you don't know which one she is how she is she has combined both of this uh, she used to appear just like a common uh, mother very simple in jarambati uh, and uh, yet so many people saw that inner divinity come out in so many ways so we did, do not see mother like uh, you know shri ram krishna's life all in samadhi and uh, very very exalted states you don't actually see mother's life like that she looks like the common mother at home you know once swami shridharanand ji maharaj asked shantanand ji uh, shantanand ji was a direct disciple of holy mother and he asked him uh, maharaj did you ever see mother in samadhi holy mother and shantanand ji got angry he said what mother in samadhi she is the giver of samadhi <laughs> if she were to be in samadhi how would this play go on she is the giver of samadhi so that is her stature only she came in this guise so that we feel at home with her so that we we are able to relate as mother you know once shri ramkrishna said very significant he said uh, of course he said these things you know it very well she is my shakti she is saraswati come to impart knowledge to the world but she has hidden her divine form and she appears in a human form so that people don't look at her otherwise 
and mother once said that shri ramkrishna had the feeling of motherliness towards all creation that was his bhav but he wanted somebody to demonstrate that bhav in a human body in a female body so he gave that bhav to mother so she became the universal mother hmm? how he invoked that bhav we all know you know about the shodashi puja na hmm? see some incidents of mother's life we will just focus upon to understand how this uh, this image of mother uh, really it is it is our future i am telling you everywhere that i have gone sometimes i have had the idea they want vedanta or they want yoga psychology or something but everywhere they want her only <laughs> that's my perception because everywhere uh, it is yearning for this pure womanhood motherhood that is there in every human heart and even in iits most of all they they need mother because uh, a place where you can your heart can be at rest all the time and a radiant pure motherly attitude towards everyone this is really the rarest thing on this earth on this planet so she is unique only she is so simple we don't see it the life is so simple you know how simple mother was once one disciple is um, this is a very amusing incident one disciple uh, is sitting before her and he is telling her mother do you uh, mother mother asked him okay mother asks him uh, do you believe in ghosts then he said uh, yes mother ghosts are there but we are the children of the divine mother we are your children so i have no fear and then mother is saying but i fear them <laughs> see the human aspect of the divine <laughs> like this mother was so simple like when you read her talks and all that now she will feel she is a human being but thakur and swami ji have given us who she is and she has revealed it in many incidents in her life right from the beginning so i will pick out a few incidents and just we will go deep into those incidents see mother's life thakur's life you don't go on reading page after page you read one incident then you close your eyes and meditate on it and then it will be revealed to us how only a divine personality can uh, say that can behave like that ah uh, the response from divine beings is completely different they have such a tremendous inner balance and composure because they are in touch with the divine <clears throat> that it will come out in their lives hmm? mother's life as a child think and see in jerambadi she grew up in amidst na- nature hmm? see people who really grow up like that i tell you even human beings they become extremely sensitive and they have learned the lessons of life without having somebody to teach them that is the magic of nature when you grow up in a village what kind of a village was jerambati see in those days absolutely no electricity okay no television internet nothing of this no public transportation no water even they had to go and fill their pitchers in a pond and come bring water simple life close to nature and very simple activities it was it's all agriculture there today it's a huge place of pilgrimage but in those days this is how the only thing that was available in jerambati was mail yes, yes. so yeah. you could send a letter and you can expect a reply that that much was there nothing else was there so mother grew up in this rural simplicity see when you grow up in in nature you know close to nature what happens is you get tuned to a different wavelength altogether you become sensitive to everything that that is around you you are not in your own uh, sophisticated mm-hmm. capsule of thought mm-hmm. yes and here uh, what happens is nature tends to teach you how to be patient how to be calm how to respond appropriately to every situation how to be balanced within ourselves how to keep a very very calm state of mind under all circumstances how to behave with others this will all come naturally 
we have made such an improportionate uh, you know educational system which doesn't focus on this at all you see in japan today they are introducing it have you seen that it's called what do they call it forest uh, bathing forest bathing you have to do that you know why you have to do that because when this is pancha mahabhut that is also pancha mahabhut in its pure form elemental form so your whole body and mind will resonate according to that and it will teach you if you remain silent in nature it will teach you i am always telling this in delhi especially because that uh, that tremendous energy to or technology and development and the and they removing the green cover almost 30% is gone actually when you land into delhi uh, from the air you can see the devastation that is the cause for the pollution and all that <clears throat> so living in its nature and having it around you is very very important to the spiritual life to the sensitive life <clears throat> and this is something we have to pick up from mother's she loved jairambati she was in her element in jairambati she loved to go there and be there so she grew up as a very sensitive girl helping her parents right from that tender age see that khichdi incident is there huh? in her life you know it huh? her father had saved enough to provide for all the villagers during a famine which struck when sharda was only 11 years old and mother was seen with a huge that fan fanning the hot khichdi as it was put on the plates the leaf plates of villagers all eco friendly techniques you see of those times you cook in a pot and you feed on a leaf plate and uh, she was seen um, yeah. fanning it cooling it and such satisfaction that little girl had in doing that throughout her life mother loved to feed people mm-hmm. she was always ready to do that even when she was quite old she would feed it is a great yagna it is a great act of worship to be able to feed a human being because yesterday we discussed it's invigorating the pranayak energy in others it is shakti puja shakti herself is showing how to do shakti puja and then don't take it as a as a piece of work i have to do or a duty it is the worship of the divine every act is like that and then um, see when mother the of course the marriage of thakur and ma took place today it may appear this this may appear very odd and improportionate shri ramkrishna was 23 mother was 5 but uh, it is a it is a divine partnership you know it's not a human affair at all because you remember when shri ramkrishna was uh, they were looking for a bride for shri ramkrishna because they thought he is always in such high states of ecstasy good to bring his mind down a little so they all were searching for a bride and shri ramkrishna was such a great man of renunciation renunciation was his fault and he could have said no talk of marriage in front of he could have done all that okay mm-hmm. but what did he say mm-hmm. why are you searching here and there the chosen one is in the house of ramchandra mukhopadhyay in jairambati mm-hmm. yes the picked and chosen one mm-hmm. is there go and find her there and they came and they really found mother there mm-hmm. see it's all pre like it, when the avatar comes it's a totally different thing so there um, when mother was uh, married to shri ram krishna she was such a young girl that there are so many innocent incidents there you know so beautiful but shri ram krishna trained mother in everything over the years uh, even in material things like how to trim a wick all this is uh, described <laughs> how to handle all types of people how to speak and <laughs> excuse me and mother was very shy and bashful by nature so this this trait was there with her throughout life the sensitive are always modest the insensitive are always gross isn't it hmm? so with in mother's life you can see this uh, so beautifully coming out when she was 18 and uh, 
she was being pitied by the villagers. They couldn't see what Sri Ramakrishna was. And they would say, poor Saru married to a madman. <laughs> and, uh, but Sri Ramakrishna was in high ecstatic states most of the time. They couldn't see that. And when she, mother heard of this, she knew in her heart of hearts what Sri Ramakrishna was. But now she wanted to see him. She wanted to meet him and serve him. So, but couldn't tell her father. But the father understood. The other ladies told him and he took her there. And you see those, those incidents where she, there is a conversation of mother and Thakur. They are also very, very beautiful incidents, you know. For the spiritual aspirant, this is all for meditation, dhyan. Hmm? Mother asks Thakur, how do you look upon me? Hmm? And what does Sri Ramakrishna say? That mother who is in the temple and who is in the Nahabat, that very mother is now pressing my feet. Mother was then pressing Thakur's feet. Look at the perception of the God conscious. It's the same mother, same Shakti. Once Sri Ramakrishna was sitting on his bed and mother again asked him, Who am I to you? And he said, My blissful mother. <laughs> and Sri Ramakrishna also asked her, when she was there, that have you come to drag me into this world? Because his mind was always... And mother said, no, spontaneously, immediately, no. I have come to help you in your chosen path. Look at the answers. <laughs> How did she say that? 18-year-old. Hmm? So it shows what it's all a divine drama. It's really divine play. Hmm? And then uh, these inc there are some incidents in mother's life uh, which reveal her divine nature. In fact, many incidents reveal her divine nature. You remember that incident of Telo Bhelo, oh. uh, where she encountered that robber. Hmm? And uh, see, many times I tell this incident to young people because. Mother's inner bhav came, comes out so beautifully at that time. Huh? Her, uh, the people who were with her, it was actually Lakshmi Didi and Sri Ramakrishna's niece, nephew, two other ladies. So they went ahead because they thought mother would catch up. And near Arambagh, they even paused. But mother was not able to catch up. So it was already almost sunset and now they were passing through those Telo Bhelo fields. And mother was alone. And that place was famous for highwaymen and robbers. And ma there was this, uh, it was a well-known fact that they only went in groups there. And mother was thinking, what to do now? It's going to be. And really, somebody appeared in front of mother, a, a big man. And uh, then mother was startled in the beginning. Then this fear crept into her heart. Uh, it is a man approaching in that semi uh, the light darkness it was dusk and then uh, mother suddenly addressed him as father you are here i'm on my way to dakshineshwar she was going from jarambati to dakshineshwar and your son-in-law lives there and then she was relieved to see there was a woman behind him he just moved aside and there was a actually there they were robbers <laughs> Yes, there was a woman behind him, his wife. So she addressed her as mother and she went to her side and said, Thank God you both are here because I had to pass through this uh, <laughs> field alone and uh, father and you have arrived at the right time. And then they really cared for her like daughter. See, the inner bhav, mm -hmm. how beautifully it has come out in this incident. And then uh, later on, no, this Bhagdi couple they were. So they later on, uh, that man mentioned, uh, Ma, he actually saw Mother Kali in you. So they really treated her like a daughter, cooked for her, took care of her till they reached Dakshineshwar. And when they, no, not till they reached Dakshineshwar, till she met her companions. And then um, they, she told them that you must visit your son-in-law in Dakshineshwar. He will be so happy to meet you. And they did visit. And even their son visited much later on and took Diksha. 
So this is the incident. The, the focal point for us is the inner bhav matters a lot in all this, in any circumstance of life. The inner divinity, the inner bhav, you know, it will change the circumstances of mm -hmm. our life also. It will change the perceptions of others. There's a beautiful saying in Sanskrit, dharmo rakshati rakshitaha. Mm -hmm. Dharmo hantaram hanti, dharmo rakshati rakshitaha. What's the meaning? Dharma, which means righteous conduct, protects the righteous. And one who destroys her own dharma will be destroyed by it. Dharmo rakshati rakshitaha. One who protects her dharma will be protected by it. And one who destroys her dharma will be destroyed by it. So we can learn all these lessons from mother's life. The sensitivity, the conduct, the behavior and the inner bhav most of all. Hmm. So uh, with this incident we can see that mother revealed her divinity many times. It's not that she was, she was in a very simple guise but many times that divinity has come out in various ways. In Dakshineshwar, there are such marvelous incidents. Of course, the initial phase was uh, mother, you can picture her deep in Samadhi, early in the morning. I love to meditate on those times in mother's life because uh, very early in the morning, mother would uh, sit for her japa at 3 a.m. and the whole place would be quiet and lit by moonlight. And only when Sri Ramakrishna went to the Jhautala, she would uh, hear his footsteps as it were, come out of that state. And once somebody played the flute, and mother herself has mentioned, I went into Samadhi. And then, um, once that Brinda showed a plate in front of mother, when she was in that state, and the, the sound pierced into mother's heart. And so later on she would say, never go close to a person who is meditating. Hmm? very concentrated state of mind and the samadhi state you can see in mother's life uh, at that period. And then you see, she naturally has a very, very beautiful, uh, you know, bhav towards the whole world, towards anybody coming into the temple garden. This is so amazing. See that simple pan incident, you remember? That is such a huge pointer. What is she doing? Every day she would make pan for Thakur. There it is a common practice, you know, after meals in Bengal, they take pan. It has a digestive uh, role to play. And so they do that. So she would prepare these beetle rolls for Sri Ramakrishna. And one day, Yogin Ma noticed she is preparing two types of rolls. Two types. One is the very ordinary type. And one is very special type of rolls where she is putting elaichi and such other huh, condiments. So then she, uh, she asked her mother, for whom are these ordinary roles and for whom are these special ones? She said, see many people are coming newly to this temple garden. They are coming first time to Sri Ramakrishna. I have to make them my own. So these special ones are for them. The ordinary ones are for Thakur, he's already my own. <laughs> now how, you see any young wife would think of giving the special ones to the husband, isn't it? How mother thought like this? Think and see. <laughs> the new children coming to Sri Ram Krishna, I have to make them my own. They must feel at home here. They must feel happy here. Look at the perception. This was our mother. Many incidents of her life, anyone on this planet would have done the opposite thing. I'm telling you. <laughs> Only you have to see it closely. Mother's life is like that. Just look at the incident closely. Still your mind. Meditate on it and it will reveal what divinity is there in that. See that simple incident of that plate of food. You, you remember? See mother would cook for Sri Ramakrishna. Every day she would cook what he could digest because he could not eat from the Kali temple. Uh, that food he could not eat. So she would cook very light kind of meal for him. Jhol and those things. And she would uh, carry the plate to Sri Ramakrishna's room and then he would sit down Many times he was in very high states of consciousness. So she would converse behind her veil so that he eats. Otherwise he would go into Samadhi every now and then. 
so she would sit with a fan and he would eat his meal and she would converse something to keep his mind on the normal plane and then quietly she would carry the plate and uh, go back to nahabad this was the routine now one day when she had all the food ready and very beautifully she would put it on thakur's plate you know those there you will see brass plates big ones and quite heavy so so she very nicely put all the food there whatever she had cooked and as she was about to carry it to shri ramakrishna's room another lady came there suddenly and said ma can i take this to thakur and mother said okay and she gave it to her now this lady took it to shri ram krishna's room and placed it at the where he would sit and shri ram krishna was watching <laughs> and she placed it and then she quietly moved out of the room and went to tell mother that it is done now shri ram krishna sat there staring at the food <laughs> and then mother came there and as soon as mother came and sat near him and she would take the fan and fan him while he ate at once he turned to her and said why did you send my food through her why did you allow her to take my plate of food and bring it here and mother joined her palms and said thakur please don't be angry today you take this food uh, i will only bring your food here afterwards but if somebody calls me mother ma can i take it then i cannot hold myself back uh, if somebody calls me ma i cannot hold myself back and you should also remember you are not just my master you are the master of the whole world <laughs> look at her words uh, and then shri ram krishna quietly ate the food <laughs> this was mother uh, i i really don't know how we can even think of it actually See, in uh, in orthodox bengal all this was very important mm. especially the very sensitive system of thakur he they have what is called vishesha urjita satva which means the entire system is very satvic the least disturbance and it will uh, it's an aparad isn't it mm. so they make such demands but see how mother is saying that her motherhood overpowered everything it was above everything if somebody calls me mother i will have to listen to that person she is telling him and you must remember you don't belong to me alone you belong to the whole world she is telling him inwardly shri ram krishna must have been very happy hmm? so it is he saw the awakening of this uh, divine motherhood in her in fact with the shodashi puja that came to a culmination isn't it she the entire manifestation of motherhood in her divine motherhood mm. what happened is when shri ram krishna saw this was the nature of his divine wife and she was so utterly pure he decided to perform the shodashi puja in her person this is another uh, great incident it's a it's a turning point actually sir it's an incident of tremendous significance it was 5th may 1872 when the puja took place you know this is the falaharini kali puja it is very significant you know the meaning of falaharini what what is the puja but you offer her fruits is that the puja no it is she consumes your karma phal that is the falaharini kali puja see only the sagun brahman has this capacity ishwara who we say can remove karma phal from the jiva yesterday you were asking me na how to suppose we have done some bad karma then i then how do we overcome that and i told you prayas chit but another way is this you appeal to ishwara the sagun brahman and she will eat up that karma phal the divine mother yes she is falaharini that is why she removes the negative effects of our, our karmas of the past of the present and makes you utterly pure free so that is the day of the worship of falaharini kali so on that day the divine mother is worshiped in the temple mother kali is the main temple in dakshineshwar that is where she elaborate whole night puja is there but shri ramakrishna planned a private puja in his 
room and who who was the image there it was the person of holy mother shri sharda devi so he sent word for her to come after 9 pm and he made her sit on that seat i don't know see today na if you go to dakshineshwar kali temple they have put all these barricades you know you can't enter thakur's room but when we were uh, brahmacharinis we could enter and sit in the in the room for long hours i have spent so many hours in that room and uh, it was really it is something so beautiful when you sit there now all the incidents come to your mind and the gospel of shri ramkrishna ent- entirely took place there na so it is such a magnetic place actually it's vibrant with positive energy so there they, there used to be a water pot you remember that's where the puja took place this shodashi puja so shri ramkrishna had arranged all the ingredients of worship the entire paraphernalia of shodashi puja uh, shodashopachar was there and uh, mother came and quietly sat there and took the entire puja see she was so shy by nature ah uh, very bashful by nature but she sat there and took the puja one by one shri ramkrishna first of all he purifies the entire thing and uh, does the nyas mantras and then offers her all the articles of worship one by one and somebody asked mother later on ki mother didn't you feel shy you are so shy by nature when shri ramkrishna even put food into her mouth and uh, i don't a sari over her so didn't you feel uh, sorry, like how did you take that puja and she said i was in such a state i didn't feel like saying anything she went into a samadhi like state during the puja and even the worshipper as he sat before her and invoked the presence of the divine mother in her in her person saying sarva mangala mangalye shive sarva sadhike what we chant and uh, both pujari and the devi both merged into samadhi how the puja must have been see <laughs> the whole night was spent like that and once the uh, when shri ramkrishna came out of samadhi finally he surrendered the entire uh, his sadhana at her feet the tremendous sadhana of 12 long years uh, and all his yearning for god everything was surrendered at mother's feet and even his japa mala he laid at her feet and mother quietly sat there and accepted everything after the puja was over she bowed down to thakur prati pranam dese and then she got up and then she quietly went to her room as if nothing had happened and how really a person like mother who who not come in in even before thakur you know without a veil how she accepted this puja like this and uh, it shows her stature you know once uh, swami vishuddhanand ji maharaj i think i have told you this incident earlier somebody asked him hmm, who is greater thakur or mother <laughs> because in thakur's life you find all those great ecstasies and uh, samadhis and mother's life is so simple and then um, maharaj said who worshiped whom <laughs> <laughs> who is greater who worshiped whom <laughs> so uh, it's something very uh, you know transcendental this entire episode and uh, then when uh, after this incident you know mother manifested really what is called divine motherhood wherever she was how she however she was whoever came to her it was always the same bhav towards all of them which is something remarkable you know it how difficult it is with your son at home it is one bhav hmm. but with all children of his school can we have the same bhav mm-hmm. and with all the people of the world mm-hmm. this was this is divine motherhood with everyone the same bhav in jairambati you should read her life later in later years all kinds of people coming to her and right around her all types of people 
half crazy, full crazy, how she has handled them. So compared to her life, I'm telling you, our problems are so meager, very little, but we make much of it because we can't handle it. We can't handle it. Look at the people around mother, that Pagli mommy, Radhu, all kinds of people are around her all the time. And the devotee is coming and making so many demands on her. And yet mother, same bhav towards all. So magnificent actually this is, if you think and see. Mm. So this capacity, inner resilience and uh, this, you know, ek bhav you can maintain only if the mind is extremely pure and divine. Otherwise we keep going into moods. Mm. There will be ups and downs in the bhav. In mother's life that is not there. It shows the inner steadiness. When your your consciousness is fully awakened, this is what happens. So in mother's life, you can see this so clearly. Any incident you take, in fact, it goes into this. There was one, um, one lady who was uh, really crazy, uh, who used to come to mother. Uh, and many times this has happened. She would come and she had uh, all strange ways of behaving, you know, and she had Madhur Bhav towards Thakur, imagine. Hmm? Thakur had only Madhur Bhav, you know, no? the attitude of a, a lover for the beloved. Ah. So that she had towards Sri Ramakrishna, but Sri Ramakrishna had only Matra Bhav towards all beings and looked upon all women as mother. So there was a mismatch always and he would actually drive her away. <laughs> and uh, then who solved this problem, you know? The, the direct disciples were all angry on that woman. But mother solved the problem by telling her, why do you go to him? He doesn't like this bhav. You come to me. <laughs> you come to me. I am always there for you. Look at mother's nature. Would any wife react like that? Tell me. <laughs> so this is what I am telling you, that mother's bhav towards every being was really exceptional her response in every situation. It is so simple now, we miss the point. But really, to get that bhav in that situation was really uh, something. And, um, okay, let me tell you some other interesting incidents. I have written them here. Which you may not know, because they are all in Bengali books. See? Yes, this incident is very interesting, okay? There was this uh, young boy called Nyan, not Nyan Maharaj, okay, he was different. This is another one lad who used to live in Jairambati and when mother would visit Jairambati, he was very happy, he would go to meet mother. And he was a very nice young boy, how much, maybe 14, 13, 14 years old. So he, only his, his nature was, he was very adamant by nature, okay. And uh, always uh, pressing for this and that. So when mother would come to Jairambati, he would come to her and sit and uh, talk with the devotees and volunteer his services there. All this he would do. One day it so happened that mother told him, see that Amodar river is there. Uh, on the banks of that there is a huge tree with bright yellow flowers. You take this basket and go and get me those flowers for worship of Thakur. So he was very happy. And he took the basket and danced and went there and plucked a whole lot of flowers and brought it for mother's worship uh, early in the morning. Now he gave the basket to mother and mother had already sat for the worship. Morning mother would worship Sri Ramakrishna's uh, photo image and then his mother signaled to him to sit close to him, close to her. And then the worship proceeded, she offered the flowers and then the worship was over and then she asked him to move to a mat and then told him, I will give you a mantra. See, look at his good luck. Huh? He, he was really blessed. She, without his asking, mother wanted to initiate him. So then she gave him the mantra. Okay. And then she said, now you bow down to Thakur. He is your everything. He is your master, he is your lord, he is your guru, 
he is everything for you and this boy bowed down to thakur but he immediately said but ma he is my ishtam you are my guru <laughs> and then mother said no no he is only your guru i am your mother he is your guru and he said no no you are my guru <laughs> i told you no he had this nature uh, you are my guru and uh, as regards my mother she is at home <laughs> he is telling her then uh, mother said look he is everything for us thakur is everything he is your lord he is your master he is your protector he is your guru i am only your mother i am only an instrument mother would always say such things and then this boy said no ma he he is my ishtam but you are my guru and my mother is at home and then she looked at him and said look here gyan look into my eyes i am that mother i am your mother whom you are saying she is at home and he looked at her really she had become his mother biological mother and then he suddenly fell at her feet no more argument <laughs> and he fell at her feet and he wept and he said mother now i understand you are only the mother mother of all creation and of all time in every birth you have been my mother actually he saw his mother sitting there mother's matrabhav was so intense everyone saw her as their mother do you know really when they would come in front of her you see many devotees also have told me this and of course all sadhus are immersed in mother many devotees have told me she actually resembles my mother why you know her matrabhav was so intense she appears like everybody's mother own mother biological mother so this incident is so captivating he actually saw his mother and fell at her feet and then he got up and said that mother you are janma janmantar erma you are my mother of all births you only come as mother to protect your creation this was the holy mother shri sharda devi where required she has given the actual divine vision to so many devotees and actually if you see her na it is so strange whether you are easterner or westerner or whatever from wherever everybody will say that she resembles my mother the inner bhav has come out so beautifully it was so solidified in her every response reaction was as would be that of a mother so really that is why that there's a beautiful bengali song nikhila matru hridaya sagara manthana sudha murti nikhila matru if you churn the hearts of all the mothers in the world the nectar of pure love which you will get she is embodiment of that she only the divine shakti comes in in various forms and she she has come like this in this age because she knows how we are okay in this age and how turned away from so many beautiful things in life so to guide us in her own simple mild way she has come like this but when required she will take the bagala form also mm. Mm. that is also that that incident also is there do you know that incident no you don't know that one that is a harish that uh, that is another incident in her life Hmm? see mother always appeared in this saumya saumya tara shesha saumya bhaspati sundari but she was also para paranam parama tvameva parameshwari she was both the mild sweet form gentle form of the mother and when required she has become fierce also there was this boy called harish who had met shri ramkrishna a few times and was a spiritual aspirant sadhak but his wife fed him some drugs and something like that and his his brain went haywire mm. Mm. and he he once came to jairam but even mother was there and uh, uh, i think she was in her old home at that time she was in kamarpur oh sorry she was in kamarpur not jairam but that's right 
That time she was in, after the passing away of Sri Ramakrishna, when she was in Kamarpukur, he came there and uh, he actually, due to the derangement of the brain, he pursued Holy Mother. And she went around the granary so many times trying to escape him. And then finally she herself says, I took my real form as Bagala. Bagala is an aspect of Mother Durga, fierce aspect. And she pinned him down with her knees, put her knee on his chest and slapped him many times till he came to his senses. So you see, this divine, Holy Mother. Mm-hmm. Yes, he, she pulled his tongue pulled his and slept. Mm-hmm. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. She pulled his tongue and slapped him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, these descriptions are there in uh, Chandi. <laughs> Matuji, I thought that um, the Gyan story was mm-hmm. related to Brahmachari Gyan. That's the way I've read it. Is that incorrect then? It's not the Brahmacharya. It's another yeah, story as far as I remember, but you check it out in the book, Chaitanya Nanji book. Okay, because yeah. there's also the story about the cat. That yes, yes. She that is Nyan Maharaj. Story. Yes, I know that. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, um, see, these are the very beautiful incidents of mother's life where you see, as that Nyan saw his own biological mother sitting there instead of holy mother. Like this she has done to many people. Whenever they were in doubt, in any form of confusion, when they came to her with problems, she, uh, they actually felt that it is a, uh, we, are, we are coming into the lap of our very own mother and she has given that kind of advice only to them. Mm-hmm. So what is required for the age, you know, avatar comes like that. What is required for this age? She, she came to give that. See, we require contentment, we require fortitude. She, the avatars will foresee that uh, how this age will, is going to be like and what the minds of men will be chasing in this age. So she has come to give this practical application of spirituality, especially suited to this age. Mother used to say, no virtue equivalent to contentment. Mm-hmm. Right? And no value equal to fortitude. See, all, these are all lacking in this age. Huh? So she is putting insistence on that. And then this judgmental tendency in us, in us. Her last teaching was, if you want to find peace, do not find faults with others. Rather, look at your own faults. Learn to make the whole world your own. Nobody is a stranger, my child. The world is yours. This is a, like a Mahavakya, you know. Yes, this is the truth because as long as the mind is only thinking of right and wrong, good and bad, it will never transcend itself. Please know this. This is there in the Dhammapada of Lord Buddha. It will remain in the realm of duality. If you keep judging and you are critical, you are the loser. You may say on the job front, Mataji, we require to do that. Otherwise, how will we... See, in a very general way, you align towards the good. But at every point, if you are only dwelling on that, the right and wrong of things, the good and bad of things, you cannot have a unitary perception of anything. So mother is giving this and for your own peace of mind. Knowing how in the modern age we will lack this. So she is making it clear. Take care of this because nobody is a stranger, she says. See, practical Advait. You are reflected in all beings. As consciousness. Hmm? It's a very, very, very profound idea which she will put in such simple words. In fact, she has put Advaita in very simple words. Hmm? That very being who is in the Bhagdi, who is in... All, uh, all kind, all people, that very being is in you, she will say. You know, once she gave such a beautiful teaching of Advait Vedanta, I was so stunned when I read that. Somebody was massaging her feet much later in life. Uh, she had rheumatism in her legs. So, a lady was massaging and then mother is telling her, mm, you know, 
why there is pain huh? uh, the body is one thing the mind is another thing and the soul is yet another thing but the soul pervades the body and mind so i have pain but if i if i extract the soul from this body mind complex then my pain will not be there <laughs> she's saying this <laughs> see this is vedan hmm? exactly what is to be done she is saying if you are able to separate consciousness from body mind complex you won't have sensation hmm. she is saying this so in such a simple way she puts this na this was our mother hmm? she is teaching the highest teachings in a very simple way and uh, some people had doubt you, you remember about mayavati ashram when uh, mm-hmm. there is this beautiful incident how profound mother's observations were there is this incident where when vivekananda went to mayavati hmm, he saw that already somebody had set up a shrine a small one the room shrine what we say so and already there was dhoop agarbatti there and flowers in front of shri ramakrishna and he didn't like it he didn't like it he said that i established this center mayavati center is meant for vedant sar advait vedant sadhana where you worship the divine consciousness in everyone and not for formal this personalized worship so uh, he didn't like and he and then the the disciple who had done this uh, wanted a reconfirmation of this so he sent a letter to mother <laughs> <laughs> holy mother and look at mother's reply she actually replied that see shri ram krishna was advait we are all advaitins you are all advaitins that is the fundamental philosophy of the order because it was shri ram krishna's perception of the world so actually we are not doing social service please see all the activities many people come and ask us even in delhi why are you running schools and all this this is a, a new very new age thing it's not like that for us because shri ram krishna's perception was he actually saw brahman shining everywhere and no name and form no name and form so when you serve another person according to their need whatever is required you are actually worshiping god there the same brahman put aside the name and form a little and you will see the truth of this so shiva gnane jeeva seva that is the philosophy which means you are doing jeeva seva shiva gnane thinking that is brahman coming to me in this form so it is it is actually not social service but worship of god that is the philosophy behind all the activities of the order so i am grateful to you for giving me the opportunity to serve that that is the idea not the other way around and it is all a matter of perception you know this any anything if you can uh, see the the truth behind the manifestation you will come to this automatically in in vedant we give so many examples for this isn't it is this a wood or a table is it wood or table tell me wood or table wood and table wood and table the appearances of a table it is actually only wood in a particular form isn't it world is only brahman but appears as the world this is all they are saying appearances are as per your equipment yes hmm? so then you decide what will appear how yes whether you know it or not see you, i am seeing a white table okay not white it is actually yellowish but a cat will see it as something else you see the green tree the cat sees the gray tree according to our equipment we perceive so the very same thing the knower of brahman sees as wood not as table at all now we are trying to remove table and see wood it won't happen 
because the wood is where the table is brahman is where the world is don't try to run away from this and that you change your perception the inner perception changes with this kind of divine influence falling on us it's only that much running away to himalayas and thinking i will sit in samadhi there is all imagination and idea i'm telling you you can do that for some time just to convince your mind if you have strong tendencies towards that but finally this very world the person in front of you is brahman and you yourself are brahman once somebody was sitting in front of raman maharshi and he said uh, i am thinking of giving up my job and uh, everything family everything and come and stay close to you and raman maharshi said why he said uh, because i want to stay close to bhagwan and raman maharshi got angry and he said see bhagwan is in you with you and you are yourself bhagwan that is your real nature after hearing my teachings for 40 years is this your understanding go back <laughs> so don't try to fantasize the mind has this tendency if i go to himalayas i will get it <laughs> if i go there i will get it you will only get it in the cave of your heart and that is where you are and only in the here and the now <laughs> never in the past ne- not in the future some great being will come into my life and then i will get it all these fantasizing we should stop mm. that is why vedant so uh, mother's life is showing us that's why you see how practical she was where she is she is doing the perfect thing serving the person in front of her ha huh? not philosophizing and fantasizing and yes something in the future it will happen truth is right now as it is right now right here this is the fact only this mind na it will always say oh i should do sadhana i should do this i should do that then i will come to this because it is trying to conceive of the absolute always it is doing this please check and see that's why i told you right initially don't try to bring brahman into your mind it will never happen your mind should learn to transcend its tendencies and remain over as it is as brahman but it will always keep making future plans the nature of <laughs> mind is like that it is uh, prakriti no changing jai ma